What's up YouTube? TechShot87. And today we are doing the, I guess you could call it the final or shooting review on the SIG P320. Uh, we got a lot to talk about uh, with this gun, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we showed the uh, little shooting clip right before. Um, but there's a lot to talk about. So you're probably here, you've probably heard some good things about the 320, and a lot of that's going to be echoed in this review as well. Um, but let's say you're looking for something different other than a Glock or an MMP or an XD, and you want to go with something different. Um, this just might be your gun. So, we did a previous video talking about where I got it, how much I got it for, how I came across it, um, breakdown, the modularity of the 320, and some other things. So, I still want that video to hold some weight and have some value. So, we're not going to talk about a lot about that stuff. Maybe refer um, to some of it, but not a lot. So, we'll talk about the features and stuff really quick. Um, Hopefully you guys will stick around till the end, um, and I'll tell you likes, dislikes, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the 320 is SIG's first striker fire gun. A lot of you guys already know that. Um, it comes right out of the box with two 15-shot magazines. Um, very high-quality mags. You get a little throwaway-style holster. Uh, there's not a lot out there for the 320 right now, um, but outside the waistband holster comes with the gun. Uh, ships with uh, SIG light night sights, which are really nice. They have a little bit of a different contrast than a Nori white dot setup. Um, but once you get used to them, they're really nice, and the night sights show up really well. So uh, you have a kind of extended, or not extended, but you have a kind of beaver tail here, so you can get a really high grip. And this was one of the things why I actually bought the gun, because it feels so good in your hand. Uh, the grip is not too big. Um, there's four different models of the gun. Um, this being the compact. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, front and rear cocking serrations. Um, overall, a very clean pistol. There's not a lot of riding. There's no riding on the slide except for the 6-hour P320. Um, not a lot of riding on the frame. So very clean overall ambidextrous slide stop and your magazine button is reversible and it is slightly extended so really nice mag release I like that kind of triangular but um, very nice all right the trigger on this gun is really nice now it's not going to be the lightest you know I, I had a chance to hold an H&K VP9 um, it's probably a little bit heavier than that uh, probably a little bit heavier than the PPQ the nice thing about the trigger is you know exactly where it's going to break each time. You have a little bit of a gritty sound here. You can hear that. As soon as you pull the trigger, it breaks. It's kind of springy. Um, it has that kind of feel. But it is very nice. If you're a reset kind of person and you care, there's your reset. So, very nice trigger. And uh, we'll show you here in a minute when we get to the shooting um, how good you can be with this gun right out of the box. Um, the takedown lever right here, if you're a right-handed shooter, uh, doubles and you can just hold your, your thumb right up there and get a really, really comfortable place to just hold the gun. So I like that. Uh, the extractor doubles as your um, loaded chamber indicator. And that's pretty much it. The gun is excellent um, in my hands. Now, we have a lot to do on left on the channel. I mean, there's so many guns out there we haven't even touched the surface on. But in my hands, and this can change, in my hands, this has been the best shooting gun <clears throat> I've ever had as far as a pistol. Um, it is that good. So we're going to go ahead and kick it out right here. We're going to go to the shooting. I hope you guys will stick with us after, and we'll talk about likes dislikes and all that kind of stuff and um we'll go from there so i hope you guys enjoy it we'll see you in a minute and one thing i want to point out as well is the ease of operation on this gun is really really solid it is super easy to to just to just run this gun as far as racking the slide very clean really easy to rack kind of reminds me of the uh 
the Glock 19 slides, how easy they are. And if you want to use your slide stop as a release, that's easy to do as well. I know a lot of people don't like that. They say you're going to mess up the gun, blah, 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 blah. It's there. If you want to use it empty, then it's an option. So the gun is super, super easy to to work, and I really like that a lot about What's it. What's up, YouTube? Tech Shot 87. Uh, we're finally doing the shooting review on the P320. We got some Federal aluminum case, some Winchester white box, and some Tula ammo steel case. P320, I only brought one mag with me. I forgot the other one. Um, so we're gonna start at five yards. We got the multiple silhouette. I'm gonna start with the uh, top left one, and me and Jen are gonna work our way around. So let's go ahead and get started. Good? You good? I'm gonna start at five yards. So. pretty good at five yards. Uh, pulled one down low here, but uh, had a couple here. I was just aiming for that center mass and that trigger is just a nice clean break on it. Those are the first shots. I'm gonna take it out to seven yards now and see how we can do it with that. We're gonna try the seven yard. Up there, that's a nice group. So Jenny's gonna load up and she's gonna take a few shots now, but we're impressed with that. They're, they're kind of tough to pick up at first. There you go. Uh-oh. 
there. Alright, we're going to try some aluminum cased federal. Pick this up from Walmart, see how this stuff runs. We got the aluminum case. We're going to try to fix it. And uh, just see how it does out of that. Yards, that thing's got a sweet trigger on it, and that's the main thing about it. Uh, it's one, two, three, four shots right there, uh, all in that little area. Pulled a couple here, here, but overall, it's great, great. Smallest one at 50 with Brad. Five times, um, all right there in that center. center. Pulled a couple. Obviously, that's a tough shot to make at 15. You've never tried it on one of these small silhouette or the silhouette. Try that silhouette at 15 yards. That's tough. So.
There you go. Bring that target in. She's going for the bottom left. That's pretty. That's pretty good. So, tell the world what you think about the uh, P320, John. I think it shoots nice. It's what do you think? I think it shoots pretty good. Trigger. There's no creep with the trigger whatsoever. It's dead on. Whatever you mash it, here it is. Yeah. Pretty strong, clean. Like Getting it. Getting used to it. Yeah. I want to try it one more time. All right. What? You just gotta get used to it. Yeah. Now, word of note, I've dry fired the 320 probably a um, hundred times before we actually shot it, so. Yeah. It's very different from my MMP. Yeah. It's got a lighter trigger, though, too. You yeah, almost, but there's no creep with it whatsoever, either. Yeah, you're almost surprised when it got. <laughs> Can't exactly, or they'll kick you out. But just quick shooting, just whatever. All the silhouette. Thing's got a nice trigger. I'm telling. You. One over there, the rest of the shots right there. The 320 has got an amazing trigger. I love it. Uh, we'll see you at the I'm going to try the bottom three targets and just bounce between it and see how accurate we can be with that. Oh, oh, So I hope you guys enjoyed that. As you can see, the gun is a shooter. Now, one thing about it I thought was worth noting is that I actually dry fired the gun probably a hundred times before I actually shot it. So, um, and I, I would say that helped. I kind of knew what to expect. It's a little bit heavier, um, but it, it's just it's got a really nice break and. Um, unfortunately, there's no rapid fire in there, and they will kick you out, but I try to, you know, speed it up a little bit to see how the gun handled. One thing I've always heard about is a really high bore axis on these guns, and I didn't notice any kind of difference as far as muzzle flip or keeping the gun controlled. Um, I know, you know, with my experience with Glocks in particular and M&Ps, um, you can get your hand really high up close to the barrel, but I didn't notice a disadvantage to having a high bore axis on this gun. Just wanted to point that out there. Uh, the gun overall is nice. You've seen there's no break-in period. Uh, those were the first 200 rounds. I don't think we had them all on camera, but uh, 200 rounds, steel case, aluminum, and brass. Um, 
no malfunctions, no hiccups at all. So really, really good there. The gun is a shooter. The gun is a shooter. And like I said, if you're looking for something that's a little bit different than your Glocks and MMPs, this might be your gun. Uh, one thing I did mention in the first video, these magazines, when you, when you actually release them, they kind of just fall out. Um, they, they, they don't really spring out at you. I'll grab another gun for comparison here real quick. Just something laying around. Just kidding, by the way. Uh, the LC9S already reviewed. Love it. Um, when you pop these mags out, they jump out at you. I like that. But one thing on the SIG is it has these little ears kind of right here. It's kind of stepped right there. So if you were to get any kind of obstruction in the magazine well, dirt, sand, anything, you can kind of just rip those out and get a fresh mag in. So nice little touch. One thing as well, on the back here, you have a hole cut out here and a hole right here. So I guess that's an, an, an for a lanyard or something like that. I don't know. Um, the stippling on the grip is super nice too. Even after a couple hundred shots, hands getting sweaty. I feel no real need to add any kind of talon grips or anything to it. It's really, really nice. Um, overall, the gun is nice. The gun is a shooter. No kind of break-in period. No issues with it whatsoever. Um, the one thing I hate about this, and I'll get a close-up of this, if you can see that. Can you see that pretty good? The scratches on the polymer are terrible. Terrible. Flip it to the other side. And it came straight straight out of the box, just like this. Is that picking up pretty good? Just, I don't know why. I mean, so Duracoat or Cerakote will probably be in the future for this one. I just It kind of bothers me. I mean, you know, the gun is going to be used. I don't plan on getting rid of it. But right out of the box, brand new like that, it's just kind of terrible. Um, this is actually a glass-filled nylon, is what Ruger calls this, but... The other guns that I have that I looked at don't scratch up like that. They just, they don't. So I thought that was kind of, kind of weird, but, um, that's probably the one thing I hate about the gun. That's it. So if that tells you anything, that's not a lot to be hating on. Night sights are great. The cleanliness of the gun is awesome. I really like that. I do intend on using this rail, by the way trigger is great i like that there's no kind of safety tab on it whatsoever it's just really clean uh you have a squared off trigger guard here that's has these little uh cutouts in it i guess serrations so if you you know you hang your index over like that it'd be really comfortable um let me get a close-up of this grip it really is Super nice. It, it's kind of similar to the PPQ and what the H&K has done as well. Um, and it, it feels really good. One thing about this gun in general is I don't feel like I have to replace anything. The sights are great. Uh, the grip feels great. Um, one thing about this gun that's different from others is the modularity. So you don't have a back strap system or a side plate system like the H&K. What, what's in the box is is it. That's it. But this entire chassis comes out. I'll show you that really quick. But you can interchange calibers, grip sizes, or frame sizes, and all that in between your likings. So if you want to use the full size for a range gun or competition or whatever, and then carry the subcompact, which should be coming out this year, you can do it. You can change your calibers. Now, we don't know what the prices of those are going to be, and that's going to be the biggest factor of, you know, whether it's worth it or not. But it is very interesting, and it's very simple. Real quick, show you. Drop the mag. Rotate your lever down. You don't have to pull the trigger. It's not a big deal, but you don't. Um, and then, basically, you pull your uh, takedown lever out, push up, and pull out. And there's your actual gun. Um, and you can take this now, if you had a subcompact, let's say you had you know, your, your compact in nine millimeter and you have your subcompact in 45. <clears throat> that clicks down, move it back. 
put your takedown lever back in and and you just got to mess with this it just kind of rotates in there all right rotate it back down to the original position and put your new slide and bow on. so with that modularity um, there's four different sizes on the 320 we'll go over this real quick you have a full-size model a carry model a compact it's not really compact I, I, I promise you it's it's kind of a smaller full-size gun and then you have a subcompact which is coming out later this year the subcompact holds 12 plus one rounds okay and nine millimeter and the subcom what what sig calls a subcompact is really the size of like an m p regular compact so just think of it like that they're a little bit bigger than you know how they seem um this compact gun is is really not that compact um the weight is is pretty good 26 ounces with an empty mag um <clears throat> I had a I had a I was talking to a guy earlier. He was talking about the the, the difference between the carry and the uh, <clears throat> the compact, and the full size holds 17 rounds. The carry holds 17 rounds, but the carry actually has a shorter barrel. It has the same size barrel as this one, and then when you get to this one, you have 15 rounds. <laughs> um, so there is a difference between the carry and the compact. Um, you just have a longer grip on the carry model. All right, so four different sizes. There's supposed to be a lot of different frame sizes coming out for each one, supposedly coming out this year. The idea sounds great. It really does. Like I said, it just depends on the price, um, if that's going to work or not. But the whole idea and how easy it is to do is really, really a good thing. If it was hard to do that, I would say it, it's just not worth it, but they've really made it easy and a point that you know this is what they want to incorporate into the pistol um this is my first uh this is my first sig okay in the past year a little bit over a year since we've been shooting we've tried to do um a lot of different guns you know one thing about it when you start shooting you're gonna hear a lot of different things from different people hey just get a glock 19 or go with the mp you really want to try all these different guns because everybody, all the main manufacturers pretty much have a uh, polymer frame striker fire gun now. So you really want to try them all. I mean, if somebody would have told me last year that, hey, SIG is going to be your your new uh, uh, firearm that you like the most, I'd probably be like, eh, I don't think so. But really, man, this is uh, this is pretty pretty cool that, I, you know, this SIG has, has really impressed me a lot i'll just say it like that um with all the different options out there it really really is a benefit to to get them in your hand um and and shoot them if you can even though it can be pretty expensive written guns um it is definitely definitely worth it on the other note you can always sell them and and you know just get something else so um but with all the ones that i've had in my hand the glocks the mps the springfields um the rugers the SIG is by far the best one I've had in my hand. Now, I'm not really counting the smaller guns that we've done uh, because those are going to be harder to shoot. You're not going to get real, you know, it's not technically a range gun. Um, I'm just counting the compact to full-size guns that, that I've dealt with in the past year. This is by far my favorite so far. It can always change, and I'm sure as long as we do this, it will. But right now, this, is, uh, this has been the best one. Um, the feel of it is just great. I don't have really big hands, and it just, you know, the magazine in there, it just feels feels really, really good. Um, talked about what I don't like, and just that, that scratching on the polymer is just really weird. Everything else I love. I love it, and I'm not just saying that because I bought it. I just, I like the way it feels. I like the way it shoots. I just showed you guys, you know, it, it's it's a shooter. No issues so far. Um, like I said, if you're looking for something different, uh, I would definitely uh, definitely consider this gun. I would consider other ones as well. The PPQ. I, I don't think I've heard a single person say anything bad about a PPQ. Um, the HK VP9, pretty new in itself. I've heard nothing but great things from those. So it's really just going to come down to what you like 
but the 320 is right up there with the best in my opinion um that's all there's there's really to say i hope you guys enjoy this video i hope you stuck it out with us um there's gonna be a lot of uh new guns coming hopefully hopefully maybe a glock 43 in the future um that gun has been causing a lot of buzz and even though to be honest with you i'm, I'm happy with what i'm carrying glock 43 is on my radar as well so hopefully we can get one of those soon i've, I've seen a lot of places pre-ordering um specifically for law enforcement and already sold out so we'll see in the near future and um hopefully you guys enjoyed it and as always hold them down